Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode here at Doc's Autos. If you're joining us for the first time, I am Tim. And if you are not new to our channel, welcome back. I hope you have liked and subscribed to our channel in the videos. And uh, here we go. All right, so we have been still working on the shop. We've had some pretty, uh, pretty bad weather. Uh, the week before this week, um, it's kind of hindered us from doing much of anything. Uh, and this week has actually been quite nice. So I've been outside in the afternoons um, before it gets dark, which is now an hour sooner, unfortunately. But working, uh, getting done whatever I can. Uh, last week we did have the folks from uh, Bears Overhead Door come and get the uh, overhead doors installed. So those are 14 by 14s insulated doors. So that's pretty great. Um, we have the two entry doors that I got installed. Uh, I've got some paint for the door jams as well and get those trimmed out. And uh, I've been working on getting all the strapping for the gutters up. Uh, when they first, uh, when I first put them up, we had a few inches of snow and the strapping kind of buckled. So I went back to Great Western and said, hey guys, uh, we haven't gotten a lot of snow and these things are already buckling on me. And uh, they looked at it and said, oh, we'll send you out more straps. So I've got another 170, they said, 180. So I've got a number of these straps that go on the gutters. So these go on the ribs, and then this attaches to the uh, to the gutter itself. I'll show you when we get up in, in the lift. Uh, but so I've got those to put on. Um, I've got roughly, without those straps it was 117 120 pieces of trim and sheeting to put on yet so here's all of our gutters uh or our our rake trim actually uh the tie into the gutters uh here is more of our uh eave trim uh angle trim box of spare parts and screws or pallet of spare parts and screws so we're really getting down to not a whole lot of stuff left, just kind of becomes tedious, especially fitting all the corners for uh, for the gutters um, and trimming. So that's, uh, that's the one part I didn't want to do that I was not terribly enthused about, but we're struggling a little bit and pushing through it. Uh, but here's the soffit for the lean-to. Um, see if we can get out here and look. Oh, here's our mud we have, and we still have snow from uh beginning of last week or two weeks ago anyways uh we still have quite a bit of mud i uh, have been able to get up all of this uh, the rake channel last weekend a uh, buddy came down and helped me with that I fed him pizza and a few beers so that was much appreciated uh and that allows us to get our our rake trim on which ties into our gutter And let's walk around here. Uh, you can see I got one of the downspouts on. Uh, so that really trims out the corner of the building nice and gives it some definition. Um, so up there in the corner, the rake trim ties into the gutter. Uh, so everything looks pretty seamless. You don't see a standard gutter like you'd have on your home, which is really, uh, really a really nice uh, design touch. Um, of course, there's a, few, uh, there's a few flaws in here that I've made, um, which I'm sure you might see if you're a little more experienced at this than I am. But for me, I think it looks pretty darn good. Uh, there's still some things to do, like back here uh, on the uh, transition from the uh, wall and roof and lean to right there. There's some trim to go on. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is aside from these longer panels left over from the soffit, this little pile of stuff is all the scrap trim and sheeting that I have left. And a lot of it's just angle pieces and a big amount of these long pieces here are just the uh, corner guards for the trim boxes. Um, so really I have some scraps, corners, end pieces, and then just the, the cover panels that were um, on the, the bundles of uh, the sheeting for protection. Um, 
So the amount of waste out of this building is very minimal. And uh, I will likely take that to the recycler. Um, we have some of our cribbing left over from uh, the shipping. And a lot of these are some 4x4 posts in there, which I can use for blocking for uh, vehicles, uh, campers when we go camping, uh, 2x4s in there for other stuff. Uh, basically, there's a lot of good material in there that I can reuse for other other things uh hop up on the trailer see if i fall through it or not not yet uh difficult to see but up there i did get um did get the sheeting up between the lean-to roof and the main roof and the next step is to put in the soffit underneath um so that's going to be a project for this coming weekend i spent most of uh yesterday up on there on my back underneath and abused my back and knees so i'm not doing that today uh, but what we are going to look at today oh that's where i fell through before don't walk there oh so what i am going to work on today if i can avoid the mud is working down the rest of this back wall for the lean-to and getting up the gutter and the strapping and finish up the uh, trim on the sides here um, there are a couple of little closure pieces that go up in here around the uh, around the beams So maybe I'll get those in there um, Along with my extra gutter straps came some ash gray uh, Rivets to go up there as well. So that's pretty great um, otherwise We're getting down there. It's basically rake trim uh, rake trim and gutters to put up and uh, that little bit of uh, sheeting or soffit under the uh, under the lean-to, so that's uh, that's kind of where we're at for the for the exterior of the building. Um, interior, you know, we did have the electricians come out a few weeks ago. We got that wired in. Um, my thought is I'm going to put the horse trailer over here along where our split wall will be. Um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, I will have a better idea of kind of how big the space is to work with. Uh, two, um, that'll give us more area to put hay over here along the side wall or along the end wall here uh, behind the bobcat. Uh, so I'm not trying to maneuver around A, the door, B, a pile of hay, and Z, a, a horse trailer. Uh, so move that over here. That gives us a 30 amp outlet from the panel to come over here to further connect up to things like the block heater for the Bobcat, the pop-up camper, battery maintainer, and uh, ultrasonic mouse thing in there. Um, so that frees up uh, some outlets over on the panel uh, for whatever else. Uh, but most importantly, there's a fridge in there. So I'll have a refreshing beverage whenever I need. So we're pretty much kind of working through the last few bits and parts of this here. Um, we're quite happy we've got a couple of days of nice weather here, so I'll be out here all weekend, pretty much sun up till sundown, uh, working on stuff. Uh, but over on the shop side, we've got the girls tucked in for, for the winter here. Uh, they'll end up getting moved a little more back towards the back of the building. Um, we have one little pallet of remaining parts to use. We've got some of the mastic tape for the trim. Uh, some random screws still for some of the trim and some of the closure strips for uh, above that soffit um, on the lean-to. So the goal once that pallet is gone, the vehicles will get pushed farther up against the wall here. And that's going to kind of give us an idea of workspace uh, in this area here. And kind of the more I'm thinking about it, um, our original plan was to put up a two-post lift um, and the more I'm thinking about it, I am probably going to put up a four post drive on lift so that I can actually keep a vehicle on the lift um, storage and stack one more underneath it. So uh, we're not taking up so much space with vehicles that aren't being driven um, all the time. Um, I've kind of gone back and forth between the two posts or the four posts. And I think um, knowing I'll probably have something on there in storage. Uh, probably the four post is the best way to go just so we're not resting um, on some small parts of a frame for old cars that are already sort of rusty. So it just seems a safer bet to go with the four post lift. 
Um, so that's about it for now, I think. I don't have a whole lot of other big stuff. It's just a bunch of little stuff to get done here. So we'll go up in the lift and uh, see if we can't work through some of this gutter trim or gutter straps, and I'll show you how those go on. Um, and that's gonna be about it. I say that a lot and I find something else to do. So that's, that's par for the course. I can clean up in here a little more, get the pallets out of here. Those pallets will end up coming over here uh, for the hay to sit on so it's off the ground. Those tarps get put away, that steel goes out to scrap. Um, probably save a couple of pieces of the steel, uh, the longer pieces anyways. Uh, if I ever wanna put like a back wall, backstop for welding, um, and maybe they'll just come in handy someday. I mean, they're 26 foot long pieces of steel. Um, I don't have a exact need for them right now, but uh, maybe I will in the future. So if I can stack them up against a wall and call it good, then they're not gonna hurt anything. So let's wander outside, get up on the lift and see what we can get done. All right, so sorry about the background noise for the lift, but it's not quite running right. I think there's a fuel delivery problem. We've gone through all the filters, it still wants to lope and not always restart for me. So it is what it is. But for our gutter straps, the original plan called for one strap every third rip. And when we had a few inches of snow, the gutters over the porch, these kind of sagged down and bent. Um, so what Great Western has done is sent me out another strap for every single rib. So that's what we've got to do all the way down, get everything lined up, and get those last couple sections of gutter on. So, here we go. Basically the gutter straps are 12 inch long pieces of uh, steel. Um, and you have a mastic tape on the back side, so when you screw it in, fits in here, screws in, and makes a nice uh, nice connection for the gutter uh, to help it uh, to support it. So that's what we're doing is just going ahead and uh, running these all the way down the roof. Um, I've already gone ahead and pre-made all these with the mastic on them measured out where they should be uh, set on the on the roof. So we'll see how these all line up. <laughs> 